Good morning, Whitney Church. Hi, awesome, awesome. We are so glad to see you. Uh, we love seeing your uh, smiling faces. I get to see most of your faces today. Um, each and every time you get to come here, whether it's uh, every week or every so often, and uh, even if you're uh, watching us on the internet, we uh, love that and we appreciate that you're joining us for worship that way. Um, if you have one of these horrid little things, if you would put it on silence, that would be lovely. And I'll turn it over to Kevin. As Bert said, thank, uh, thank you for being here this morning. Wel welcome to worship at Whitney. Please stand as you are able as we sing our opening song together, Here I Am to Worship. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the all for love's sake became poor so here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. All together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. Good morning. Welcome to our worship. For Whitney United Methodist Church, we're, we're back into January weather again, but it's good to have you here, and it's, it's nice and warm and comfortable here. Uh, for those watching online, I'm Pastor Daryl Blanksma, and we're, uh, it's good to have you here as we're in the third Sunday after the Epiphany. A uh, few, few announcements. If you have a prayer to share this morning, you should find some green prayer cards in the uh, back of the pew in front of you, and those will be collected following the the hymn after the sermon. Um, if you haven't, I nicked myself this morning. If you haven't done so yet, um, please take a moment to pass the attendance registers down the aisle and, and uh, sign those and let us know who all is here. Um, we uh, are doing some estimate of giving cards for 2023 to help with our budget planning. And if you have yours, or uh, you can just. Uh, Drop it in the offering. You can fold it up and drop it in the offering, or there's some envelopes on the back table there if you want a little more privacy on that. Or 
there's also some envelopes back there if you want that put it in. Um, or if you don't have them, you can just uh, bring them to the office at any time. Uh, last week I started a, a study of the book of Revelation, and we did a lot of, of, of background, and tonight we're going to actually get into the actual writing of Revelation. But that's 6.30 tonight. Um, it's probably about an hour to hour and 15 minutes class. I'm trying to keep it there because I know some folks have kids to get home to and get to bed. Um, but we're going to meet, uh, the plan is to meet in room three tonight, so... Th that's through the office and cleared back to the back of the office area for room three, and that'll be 6.30 tonight. Coming up on Saturday is a Whitney family uh, event. We're having a movie night. Do we know the movie yet? We'll know on Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> come be surprised and bring some snacks to share, and, uh, and uh, we'll do that on Friday at, I always forget the time, 6.00. Saturday, Saturday, right, Saturday, see, testing you, you passed, <laughs> Saturday at 6, we'll see you there. Um, a reminder that uh, we have changed our office hours a bit to, so that uh, this helps Kendra with her school schedule, so she is in Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and Thursday afternoon from 2 to 4, and she's going to work from home a couple hours on Tuesday afternoon for us, so... Um, that's a, a little bit of shift. And then the last thing I wanted to announce today is that uh, on February 12th, we're hoping to have a, participate in Super Bowl of Caring. That's spelled S-O-U-P-E-R, Super Bowl of Caring. It's a, a been going on for a number of years on Super Bowl Sunday, but it's an opportunity to, to raise some awareness about hunger and some funds for hunger awareness. So we're going to have soup following worship. Um, and I'm still looking for a couple people that might be able to help by making a pot of soup. And if that's something you could help out with, uh, please let me know so we can make I'll sure there's... Make one. David will make one. All right. How about two? Two. Okay, we'll have Peggy. Three. Peggy. And I've already got Casey. There we go. We got four soups. All right. We'll have a soup off. We'll have a soup <laughs> off. We'll, we'll, we, will, we will vote on which is the best soup. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, so plan on soup, uh, February 12th. Stay and have a bowl of soup before you go home and start all your Super Bowl activities. Um, yeah, and that is all the announcements that I have this morning. Again, yeah, welcome to our worship, and we invite the choir to, to lead us now. Good morning. I'm Barbara Nolan, and I'm your liturgist for this morning. Please rise as you are able and join me in the call to worship. 
Jesus calls us to praise and prayer, to song and silence. Jesus calls us to worship. To worship. Jesus calls us to hearing and healing, to service and solidarity. Jesus, Jesus calls, calls us, us to love. love. Jesus calls us to advocacy and action, to protest and provision. Jesus, Jesus calls, calls us, us to justice. justice. Let us heed the call of Christ. Let us worship together with joy. Our opening song is, Lord, You Have Come to the Lake Shore. It's number 344 in your red hymnal and on the screen. Please join me in the opening prayer. We thank you, God, for calling us into your church to be your people. We have gathered God of grace and wisdom because we have heard your call. You have reached out to us in Jesus Christ. You have touched us with your spirit, and we have turned toward you, seeking to love as we have been loved. We call upon your holy name, empower us to worship and serve you, walking gently on this earth through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Our scripture reading this morning is 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 18. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by closed people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might be emptied of its power. For the message but about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The second reading this morning is Matthew 4, 12 to 23. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen, and he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went through out Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. As we ponder the meanings of these words for our lives. Oh, 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 
if you were here last Sunday, then uh, you probably noticed that this morning scripture lesson, at least the last section of it, sounds an awful lot like the one we heard last Sunday. Last week we read John's account of Jesus calling his first disciples, and this morning we heard Matthew tell the story. Now you may have noticed that there are some differences in the way that John and Matthew tell of this calling of the first disciples. And you may wonder, well, which one is right? Well, as my biblical studies professor used to say, the question is not which one is right, but what is each gospel writer trying to say in the way he tells this story? In Matthew's version, Jesus goes out into Galilee and calls some ordinary folks to be his disciples, promising them to follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Now, I guess that could kind of make today's sermon a fish story, and maybe I'd do well to take the heed of Mark Twain, who said, do not tell fish stories where the people know you, but particularly don't tell them where they know the fish. <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with anything about my sermon, but I just thought it was, you know, I, thought I needed to tell it. One, G one day, Jesus was out walking by the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers fishing, and he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. But maybe I'm uh, ahead of myself a little bit there, because Matthew's account begins with Jesus going throughout the countryside proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, when we hear that word repent, we often think of street preachers out berating people for some supposed sinful behavior and calling on folks to stop being morally corrupt or something like that, right? Repentance is about moral behavior. But the Greek word for repent, metanoia, is more accurately translated as something like be of a new mind, or change your way of thinking, or even wrap your mind around this. When Jesus went out calling on people to repent because the kingdom of heaven had come near, he wasn't admonishing folks saying, oh, you're sinners and you need to turn around and start acting right. Rather, he was proclaiming good news. He was saying something more like, wrap your mind around this. The kingdom of heaven, God's new reign of love and justice, has broken into the world. But if you, if you want to experience this new reign of love and justice, you have, to, you, th you have to think differently. You have to change your way of viewing things. Because God didn't come in the rich and the powerful and the mighty, the things that the world values. God has broken into our world in a baby born in a stable in Bethlehem. God's kingdom has come near, says Rolf Jacobson, marked by the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, the, create, the new creation of all that is dead and fallen, and the reconciliation of all things to God. It is, Jacobson, Jacobson continues, it is the announcement that none, not one of the common sense ways of thinking of the world has understood or ever could understand the mind of God. No religion, no political system, no economic system no artistic vision can ever understand the mind of God. In other words, I think what Jacobson's trying to say is that, that the way that the world has taught us to think about things in terms of economics and politics and whatever can never understand the mind of God and the mystery that is God. God just doesn't fit into the assumptions of the way that the world thinks about things and makes sense of things. When Jesus calls folks to repent, 
What Jesus is calling people to is not a new morality, but a new reality, a new way of thinking. The kingdom has come near. When Jesus calls Peter and Andrew and James and John and us, Jesus calls them and us to a new way of thinking, a new way of viewing the world, a new reality. The kingdom has come near, not in military triumph, not in the accumulation of power and wealth, not in status and privilege. The kingdom of heaven has come near as the sick are healed, as sins are forgiven, as the dead are restored to life, as creation is restored and a new community of love and justice is formed. Jesus calls Peter and Andrew and James and John to follow him, not to admire him, not to even accept certain doctrinal propositions about him. Doesn't even tell them that they must accept him as their personal savior. He calls these fishermen to follow him and to model their lives after his, to learn from him, to be a part of the new reality that is breaking into their midst. And then he gives them a task to do. Follow me and I will make you fish for people. Jesus invites us to follow him, to be a part of a new reality that is God's kingdom, and then to use our everyday skills and talents, our everyday relationships to invite others to be a part of God's beloved community. It's not a call to morality, it's a call to relationship. Marcus Borg writes, the Christian life is not about pleasing God, the finger shaker and judge. It's not about believing now or being good now for the sake of heaven later. The Christian life is about entering a relationship in the present that begins to change everything now. Spirituality is about this process. It's the opening of the heart to the God who is already here. David Lowe's in commenting on this scripture says that, that he prefers to translate the passage, I will make you fishers of people, uh, excuse me, that he, he, he prefers to, trans to translate the passage as, I will make you fishers of people, rather than the way uh, our Bible interpreted it as fish for people. Because he says that former fishers of people focuses on identity rather than function. He says what Jesus is calling these first disciples and calling us into is not work, not function, but relationship, identity. In this way, I suppose you could say that this call story is very similar to the one we heard in John's gospel last week. When the disciples inquire of Jesus, where are you staying or where do you abide, as I said, is what they're literally asking, Jesus invited them to come and see. It was an invitation into a relationship with him. Here it's also a relationship or, or an invitation, but the invitation is a little more broad. Again, David Lowe's writes, Jesus calls these first disciples into relationship with himself and with each other and with all the various people that they will meet over the next few years and indeed for the rest of their lives. And Lowe's continues, Jesus issues the same call to us to be in genuine and real relationships with the people around us, 
and to be in those relationships the way Jesus was and is in relationship with his disciples and with us. By bearing each other's burdens, by caring for each other and especially for the vulnerable, by holding on to each other through thick and thin, always with the hope and the promise of God's abundant grace. Sometimes that call to be in Christ-shaped relationship with others will take us far from home. And sometimes it will take shape in and among the persons right around us. But it will always involve persons, not simply a mission or a ministry or a movement, but actual flesh and blood persons. At its heart, that's what evangelism, that, that word that we don't like to say in the mainline churches, that's what evangelism is about. It's not about calling people out on their morals or challenging them to believe things. It's about inviting people into a new relationship, to invite others to see things from a new perspective and a new reality. This is the good news, that, God, that God's kingdom is here among us right now, if we just know the right places to look, not among the rich and the famous or the powerful and the mighty, but when the hungry are fed and the sick are healed, the outsiders are included, the forgotten are invited in. God's reign has come near when the ways of love and compassion and peace and unity prevail. One of my favorite quotes of the late Rachel Held Evans is this. This is what God's kingdom is like. A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered at a table, not because they are rich or worthy or good, because they are hungry, because they said yes. And there's always room for more. I want to say that again. This is what God's kingdom is like. A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered at a table, not because they're rich or worthy or good, but because they're hungry, and because they said yes. And there's always room for more. Jesus calls on us to repent, to see things in a new way. For God's kingdom is among us. And unless we change our way of seeing things, we might miss it. And then in seeing things in a new way, to live out that new reality in our everyday lives, through our everyday skills and talents and vocations, so that others might experience God's love in their lives, so that others might be invited into a new relationship with God and the people around them. Jesus invites us to go fishing with him. Please stand as you're able and let's sing in <clears throat> response the song, Cry of My Heart. It is a cry. It is a cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow 
all of the days of my life. Teach me your holy ways, O Lord, so I can walk in your truth. Teach me your holy ways, O Lord, and make me wholly devoted to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. Open my eyes so I can see the wonderful things that you do. Open my heart up more and more and make me wholly devoted to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. All of the days of my life. All of the days of my life. You may be seated. Um, so let me lift up and share those uh, prayers that have been uh, shared by you. From Linda, prayers for world peace. Lord, hear our prayers. Also from Linda, prayers for all who are traveling, uh, prayers for safe travels. Lord, hear our prayers. John asked for prayers for Vicki Sherman family. She passed away this weekend from cancer. Lord, Hear our prayers. And Bobby uh, asked prayers for Melinda uh, Maillard, uh, Maillard, right? Maillard? Uh, prayers for comfort and quick recovery after knee surgery. So uh, Melinda had knee surgery on Thursday. We keep her in our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us join our, our hearts in prayer. Precious Holy One, a quick glance through the news shouts out that there are many places of pain and suffering and loss in our world today. Into these hurting places and these unnamed places, into the darkness of fear and loneliness, pour out your radiance, shower down your light, break through pure brilliance until the darkness is dispelled and our hearts find peace and the light of hope until our hearts find peace and the light of hope can shine forth again, fresh and new with this new day. Oh God, we, you bring you our prayers for a world that is often hurting and in pain, but also our prayers for those closer to us and dear to us who are suffering and experiencing pain and loss in any way. Be with them as well, that they might find that light of hope and love. And be with each of us as we listen for your call to be your people, to see things in your light, not in the ways that the world often views things in ways of power and privilege, but in vulnerability and weakness. Oh God, help us to heed your call to be your faithful followers as we gather this day, lifting up our prayers for th those around us uh, in the name of Jesus, as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beside the lake shore long ago, Jesus called to his disciples, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And Jesus calls to us today, Follow me, I'll make you fishers of people. The ministry begun by the Sea of Galilee continues in our day when we proclaim the good news of God's love. So let us give with joy as we follow Jesus. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. The source of all our gifts. Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, we have felt your glory, we have seen your glory, and felt the touch of your love, and felt your presence with us. With joyful hearts we offer you our gifts. Having heard your call, we offer you our lives and our service. Amen. In that spirit of saying yes, let us sing our closing song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. 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 No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back, no turning back. 
Jesus, the light of the world, calls us to follow. So go and tell the good news of God's love. Cast the nets of grace wide, that all may see the glory of God. Go forth and shine with God's light, and may God source the word and spirit. Bless you with radiance of love. Amen. I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Good. Yeah. I was going to ask if things had slowed down any, but after the holidays, no. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Carolyn, yeah. I'm doing good.